Mihai's granddaughters liked to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aon Ignatius Rafael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shilaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot when the royal family was ousted and Arugia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess. And I found out later, she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arugian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in a regular force to clean them out. 
For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Some welcome. All aircraft, spread out and attack. We're clear to attack, right? I heard the regular forces were gonna clean things up. It's just like before. We blow the shit out of everything. Sharp as attack, aren't you, Spare Aid? Regular forces can reduce losses if you tenderize the base first. If you can't handle that, just fly and be a target. <laughs> Some have air power, so their threat levels vary. Think of the best way to rob them of their ability to respond. Use those empty heads of yours. If you die too fast, you won't even be useful as targets. Any regular aircraft that join later needing any repairs or ammo will fly over the return line. However, you guys do not have that luxury. So, what are we supposed to do? Watch out for ice while you're in there. We're being attacked. Enemy aircraft. Squadron. Ready the anti-air interceptors. Open fire. Affirmative. We'll do what we can. I'm out. Returning to resupply. How are we supposed to work without ammo? I'm heading back. Nice try. This stuff isn't for you guys. Let's be honest here. The regulars like us aren't allowed to resupply. But in your heart, you want us to smash that base. By off? <sighs> You're gonna wish this mission never ended. Looks like bad dogs finally come around. The fire set up a chain reaction. At least stop it from spreading. What are the odds of getting out alive? That's for you to figure out, Spare 7. Transport truck spotted. Not a threat, but feel free to take them out. The vehicles have been taken out. Go on to the next target. You're our official fly swatter now, Trigger. Trigger? Rocking it hard. Cut the crap. There's work to do. Lock 
Did the jailer know about the shitstorm he was sending us into? The penal units are just pawns. That liar son of a bitch. Don't pretend like you deserve any better. Continue with the operation.
Thank you. 